Excuse me. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, he'll be back in. Yeah. What was your message on this um, I talked to him the other day. Um, just, you know, again, I think I said it after the game. Ultimately, uh, what you want to do as a player is you want to put yourself in a position where you're not in the mix of guys that, that are in the conversation of coming out. And to do that, you, you got to play great hockey. And, and um, you know, Larks and Burt and those guys aren't in the mix of those conversations because they've played good enough hockey to take themselves out of it. Um, you know, so if you're uh, if you're any player, uh, young or old, you want to make sure that you're playing great. Um, if you play good or if you play fine, uh, at times you get in that mix. When people go in, someone's got to come out. So he knows the things. Uh, uh, he listen. Uh, Z cares a lot. Um, has tried really hard. Competes hard. Um, I don't think he's been rewarded on the number of chances he's had. I think that'll come. Um, I don't think he played as good the last two games that he did prior to the break, and he just got to get his game back going. Yeah, I think, um, um, you know, first off, I, I think Philip is, is more than just a shooter. I think that was, uh, um, uh, you know, I think he's valued himself that way. And certainly the hype was around uh, his shooting, but I think he's more than just a shooter. And the one thing we've talked to him about is, is uh, becoming more of that give go player. I think when I watched him play junior, I saw a guy who could, who could also make plays. That's what I liked about him. He wasn't a one trick pony and only be able to shoot pucks. And um, you know, when you draft wingers high, you, you, you know, I'd like him to be able to do more than just shoot the puck in the net. And so I think he can do more than just shoot it. Um, and I think that's gotta be part of his concentration is making sure he's a good, good give and go player. Um, how can he get, um, uh, you know, end up scoring more goals off his shot? Number one, I think he's just got to keep working on getting it off a little bit quicker and then uh, just keep working on the accuracy of it. Um, you know, in junior hockey, uh, you can score goals at different parts of the net that you're not scoring in the NHL. So that accuracy is critical and getting it off quicker is critical. Those two things are things that, uh, you know, sometimes it takes guys a, a little while to adapt to, to the NHL. The, the longer sticks, the, the better defensemen, the less space, the better goalies. Um, we haven't had we haven't had necessarily a, a you know direct comparison for him. Um, you know the way that the you install know, Stahl, Stahl is such a, a a natural fit for a guy that that uh, like Ras that you know in terms of size and those types of things. So I, I don't think uh, Phil needs necessarily you know I think he knows what he needs to do. I just think it does sometimes takes some time and. Um, uh, you know, so he'll go back in the lineup and, and hopefully uh, he can be successful. You know, I just try to be honest and, and sometimes honest is hard, you know, just uh, the reality of it. But uh, um, I've also, you know, him and I've had lots of conversations about you can't just value yourself as whether or not the puck goes in and, and or doesn't go in because there's just too many times through stretches of a year, stretches of a career, stretches, you know, where you just it doesn't go in and and um, you know and, and then frustration ends up, uh, you know, frustration. I've talked lots about frustration. It's a waste of human emotion in it, and but it's not easy to to fight all the time. So, you know, uh, I don't know if it changes my message per se. Um, you know, I think it, the, the, the messaging is, is still, you know, my, my job is to, to tell him when he's on the path uh, to, to doing things great and when he's not on the path. And, and, you know, I think the bigger part is making sure that, that there's impacts in the game when he's not scoring. I think that to me is the biggest thing, whether that be being great defensively, whether that be being hard on the forecheck, whether that be them scoring or, or getting the rebounds in the dirty areas, whether that be being a give and go player. You know, I think it's, it's recognizing there's, there's certainly we all want every, all our guys to score a ton, but there's more to it. How did you, what did the decision come down to the deep grass? Was it at least from where it looked like on the first two games, and then they got back to the Um, You know, I think ultimately, you know, the, the line was really good. The Rass probably played his best game in a while. And, and I thought that size and strength helped that line. It gave them, uh, you know, it gave them a, a different dimension that that line hasn't had much of that we've tried to find it, you know, and, and certainly Rass is that he's big and strong and goes the net. Um, I thought he narrowed his focus uh, instead of worrying so much about just being perfect defensively. I thought he narrowed his focus to be physical and hard at the net. And, and, and he was those two things. 
um, you know, he still is going to end up low and he's still going to be in center situations, but it's just a little bit different. So um, I didn't want to go. I, we certainly might go away from it even in, in the game, um, but I didn't want to go away from it to start the game. You know, with Suter, when you guys saw him last year, he came over in the second half or the second half. What, I don't know if you expected him to end up in free agency. Well, he played good against us and he scored against us. I think he had the hat trick the one game against us. And he was a, a generally an impactful player. Um, you know, he, he played a lot with Kane. Um, and, and, and that's that that sounds like, OK, that's, you know, almost uh, like it's easy for him. Playing with Patrick Kane is not easy. Um, you know, it's unique players. It, you got to be really smart. I can tell you that having coached Patrick, uh, you got to be a really smart player um, if you're going to stay on his line. And, and so, you know, I felt like he probably had a, a, a real good offensive smarts and you could see the defensive smarts, uh, how he plays D zone. Um, you know, so he's, 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 you know, I think he's kind of um, come in and done what I thought he was going to do. And, and he went through a little stretch, a little funk for a little bit, like most guys do. And, uh, and he's done a good job coming out of it. And uh, he's, he's a really useful player. Yep. Next we'll go to Alex. Yep. Next we'll go to Trevor Thompson. Lash, I want to take you back to the uh, Trevor Zegris, uh, Sonny Milano goal. And um, just the creativity of that, some of the creativity that we've seen, even with your own rookies and across the league with young guys. And just get your comment on what you think about the creativity of the game, where it's going, and what these kids can do at high speed in uh, the midst of battle. Uh, well, first off, both those two guys are extremely, extremely talented players, um, you know, have high, high end skill. Uh, both of them have their whole lives. Uh, I've known them from younger players and they both have high, high end skill and ability. Um, you know, I think I think young players growing growing up are uh, uh, more skilled uh, at an earlier age than ever in terms of their stick skills. Um, there's there's you know, there's way more uh, individual coaching that way. And so, you know, I've seen it in youth hockey lots. Um, you know, and, 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 you know, I don't know if they're more creative than in the past. I don't know that answer. I can't say that. I don't spend lots of time to be honest with you, Trevor, thinking about it. What it was, was a really nice play for a goal. Like that's the way I saw it. I didn't see it as a uh, change in the game. I didn't see it as uh, this huge deal. I saw it as a really nice play for a goal. And, and, um, you know, and, and, and ultimately, you know, I think, uh, productivity matters the most in terms of you know efficient productivity how much you're you're getting versus how much you're giving up and um you know and 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 certainly both those guys have been productive this year and they've helped this team win so i saw it as that i saw it for what i think it was it was a real nice play for a goal uh, it was certainly creative um and you know and there it's a hard one to defend because uh you know Sonny milano tried it last game against philly where he kind of put it up over the cage uh, it was a little different play and and but it's hard to defend because there's nobody you know lots of times on that guy right away so um you know obviously he doesn't you know wayne gretzky lived in that area and his creativity was a little bit different maybe but but um you know some of those lanes that he used to use are shut off so what's the lane well the lane might be over the net that's good for them i, I you know it's 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 uh, it was a really really nice play uh, when you talk about youth hockey and coaching with kids uh, these days and they're trying these kinds of things, do you see coaches encouraging that sort of thing or discouraging that sort of thing as far as creativity and uh, the way the game is played? And thanks, Flash. Yeah, I, I would say, you know, my, my one knock on and, and my kids have a great coach. So this isn't necessarily just uh, from, from from my own kids, but I would say the one knock on youth hockey in general um, is is that there's too much emphasis put on winning at too young an age, and so kids aren't allowed to try enough of that stuff. And and really, honestly, you know, the youth hockey anthem is uh, get it in and get it out, and 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 that's all right at the NHL level, I guess. But when you're when you're creating, when you know, I know Pavel Dats who didn't learn everything he he did by by getting it out and getting it in. Um, you know, that's the reality. Uh, so, so I, I think the, you know, the, the, the emphasis on winning at such a young age and recruiting through all these teams has really hurt, uh, some of the development of, of players. Uh, we we've got greater numbers than ever in the United States. Um, but, but we got to be careful about it, whether or not we're developing our guys and giving them opportunities to be creative like that. Um, you know, just to go back to that Zegers thing, the one thing that I thought personally was boy, Pavel Datsuk would have loved that play, you know, and, and, uh, that, that looked like a Pavel Datsuk play to me. So, um, you know, I, I think, uh, the, the more, uh, weapons in your arsenal, the better. And if that's one of your weapons, man, you know, it ends up in the net. That's a good way to score. Awesome. Thanks, Flash. Let's go to Brad Galley. I wanted to ask you about that play, too, because every pickup skate I've been a part of, somebody's tried it since it happened. Uh, but your answers were great. Zegris was a kid we got to know um, at NTDP here a few years ago. The confidence seemed like it was there from day one. 
how much do you think that's helped him during his rookie year as he's kind of battling for the for the Kelder with uh, with a few of your guys? Yeah, you know, and I don't I don't know Trevor great. Um, I've seen him play. Um, I, I I don't know that I've had you know I've been on the ice probably with him once, um, but I really don't know him. But but I certainly know uh, that that he's got real good inner confidence. And and ultimately, I don't know any great players that don't have great confidence. Um, you know, the the belief in yourself is something that ultimately all the best ones have. And and uh, uh, so I think you know, and there's different ways to do that. By the way, some people are uh, real outwardly about it. Some people it's it's more quiet. Um, you know, Lucas Raymond's a guy for me who's got a real quiet confidence, but trust me when I tell you, he's got great confidence in himself and, and uh, Trevor, she appears to have great confidence as well. And if, if he did, if he didn't, he probably wouldn't be in the running for, for the Calder. So um, he certainly deserves to be in that uh, conversation. He's been one of the uh, better rookies. Th this team's got a number of real skilled young players, and it'll be a good challenge for, for us, um, depending who's in the lineup. They've had some issues uh, with COVID, but, but the either, any way, uh, any of the lineup they, they, they ice tonight is going to have some real good skilled young players, and, and uh, you can tell that they make tons of plays. Last question, Ted Colson. Hey, Jeff, speaking of... Uh... Lucas Raymond, do you, have you guys sensed that other teams are putting more focus or attention on him these last few weeks? Um, you know, I don't know that. I, I think I think when you're playing on the – one of the challenges that Lucas has is, is he's playing on our top line, which means you're generally getting the other team's best uh, defensive players uh, both up front and on, on the back end. So, you know, I think he's had that all season, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I think if you look back over the last two games – um, just, just if we just look at that narrow uh, focus, uh, he's had lots of chances still. You know, he had two big time chances in the slot against Boston. Uh, they just didn't go in. Um, you know, we had a, a two two on ones last game. Uh, shot one wide. Uh, probably waited a little bit long on the other one that he tried to go back post to, to Bird. Uh, so it just didn't you know go in. So our team's focusing on him more. Um, I think they've focused on him all year. And and uh, you know, uh, when, when you play on that top line, uh, that's the reality of it. Is it almost like his – now it's like checkmate for him. He almost has to readjust to that now or basically has. I mean, he's still making yeah. impacts almost every game more or less subtle ways. Yeah, I, I, I'm i not worried at all about where, where Lucas's game's at. You know, there's ebb and flows the season. And, 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 you know, I think very, very early in the season, I mean, he had a, he had a point total that that's almost going to be, you know, per game that's going to be really tough to, to keep up. Um, there's going to be ebbs and flows. But again, like I see him still getting chances. Um, uh, you know, I don't think Lucas right now at his age is a guy that's going to physically dominate games. Um, I think he's going to improve in that area as he gets stronger and quicker. Um, but but I think he he's he's still getting chances, using his mind and, and doing a good job. And 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 always, I think, has been a real effective uh, two way winning type player. Hey, just a quick segue to what Brad and Trevor were saying. I mean, do you think we'll see more of this creativity now? It seems like. A lot of these younger kids have grown up with it and they're seeing it on the YouTube and, the, you know, the live action every night. I mean, I don't know, do you think there will be more of that stuff in the game here these next few years or whatnot? Well, you know, I certainly hope that uh, the game continues to evolve. And, uh, and and I think everybody would love to see, you know, except for maybe coaches in certain situations. <laughs> so, so, you know, I mean, it used to be in football, the, you didn't have the forward pass. I mean, games evolved. And, and is this going to change the game, you know, one play? No, it's it's not. It was, like I said, it was right. a play, um, uh, you know, but, it, but I don't think it's anything new necessarily making plays from behind the net. Again, that goes back, you know, Wayne Gretzky. I think it, when we go back to, to that era, they, they, you know, I think people would have been asking the same kind of conversations. Is this going to change the game? And did it maybe a little bit? Uh, I see that as, a, as, again, a lot of those passing lanes have been taken away now by the way teams defend uh, when a guy's behind the net. So he, you know, Trevor created his own passing lane by going over the net. And um, uh, is, will that happen more? Maybe a little bit. Um, I don't necessarily think any, any of it's going to be things that are going to be revolutionary and change the game per se, but I do think players um, are very, very skilled at young ages and, and are, uh, uh, and, and if we don't stifle them uh, by, by, by trying to, by placing winning as such a great importance at a youth, uh, at the youth level, uh, then, then we will see really, really creative Pavel Datsu, Trevor Zegris type players. If we stifle them, we won't see as many. So thanks, Jeff. All right, those are all the questions we had for Coach Blasio. We'll be back shortly with player availability.